Can I just take a second to digest it all? I'm here with TEDx. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the topic. So, um, cutting down cliches. To cut down cliché is actually not that easy, you know, it's easily said, but you can't easily do it. Cutting down cliché is not like cutting down a pile one, two or three. So, before you try to cut down your problem or come out of a cliché, you need to identify what your cliché is. And I'm kind of pretty sure that you might have heard or at least once said about this cliché that I can't do it all together. Uh, for like the lion's share of my life, like you said, I believe that too. I believe that one alone cannot make the change. But I'll tell you a story which changed that cliché out of my life. So this happened not too long ago. So this happened back in the days when I was in Chennai. Uh, the day I stepped down into the slums of Tori Pako. It was a sorbid, dirty, noisy, very chaotic, very chaotic and overcrowded slum. And I'm not being dramatic, it was. So I was there being myself, I'm a fine artist by the way, so I was there being myself painting the walls. And there came this very, very young boy with big dull eyes. And he kept tugging onto my jaw. He wanted my attention and when I turned into him without a gasp, the child asked me, Aka Uru Padam Varjadarvingla. For all those who know Tamil, please keep quiet. Anyway, what it means is that can you please draw me a picture? And I happily said yes. I can't say no to kids, especially when they show me those puppy eyes. So I said yes, but I didn't have any material except a brush in my hand. So I asked the child to bring me a paper. And for which I saw his eyes go down and I asked him, why can't you bring me? And he said, he doesn't have. So I said, then how do you go and study? So to my surprise, the child told me, I don't. And that quite shook me. I wasn't mature enough probably to understand the need of education then. But it really shook me that if I can go to study, why not a child like him? As a child in school, I never wanted to be in school. But then... It really shook me that he wasn't studying. And we had our conversation, it went long, it got done. The next day I got a book to him and I drew pictures. We had even more conversation, he had even more friends. Then he asked me if I can teach him. I am no one to teach, but I said yes and we started. But the following day I didn't see him and that quite brought me into anxiety. I was very anxiously waiting for this child because, you know, we had this connection a while and I really wanted to see the child again. The next day, he came along with his father, a quite young man. He came and he was quite angry, a little abusive and I can't tell you what all he said. But he told me to stop what you're doing. He told me, lady, you need to stop what you are doing, stop interfering in our life and stop ruining our life. And again, like how I was shook before, I got, I got scared again. I didn't know how to respond because all I was trying was to help the child out. And I asked him, why can't you teach him? Because if he is an educated person, you learn much better. So he said, our life is this way and let it be. And I wouldn't blame him because his reasoning was very genuine. They were a couple of people there in Tore Park. They were relocated from their place, offering help, offering sanitation, offering electricity, offering basic needs and nothing was provided. And hence, I believe their anger was genuine enough. So, probably the age, I was also in a lot of rush inside me and I wanted to teach the child. So the next day I went very boldly to teach and it didn't go well as I thought. They tied me onto a tree. They threw stones at me and they told me a lot of abusive things which probably they, you know, censor it so I'm not saying it again. And seeing this, there was this teacher there next door. She told me that we should go ahead with it. And that really drove me. And we started a small school in Chennai. To cut it short, 
Later, the school was taken over by a very prominent company and now it's running on well. Kids are doing well, they're doing fine. So, why I told you this story is that this taught me that change is possible. Sometimes you need to be the change that you wish to see. You know, we all secretly wish at some point in our life there happens to be a superhero to rescue us somewhere. You know, it can be a debt, it can be your exam, it can be even a thought that is running in your mind, a very negative, a very depressing thought. But you all wish secretly that, you know, if some superhero came and saved us, but you never see the superhero in you. There is one. Trust me, there is one. That superhero only comes when, you know, destiny forces you to act upon and take charge and fight the battle. And the very best example is that of the floods that you've just, you know, you've just watched. So, um, coming back to that again, during 2015, Nepal faced a very tragic earthquake and you know they were in dire need of help and I didn't know what to do. By the way, does any of you know Avengers? Do you watch Avengers? Yes. Very good. I was just gonna come up with the next you know line to make it a little more funny but you ruined it. So I was gonna say if you didn't watch it, please zone out. This is the time that you can zone out now that is not, no use. So yeah, coming back, um, so Nick Fury, Nick Fury is one of the person that I really admire. I'm pretty sure you're all Iron Man and Captain America fan, but I was a huge Nick Fury fan. Why? Because Nick Fury also had his powers, but he was the man, regardless of his powers, he reached out to his tribe. He knew what was needed. It wasn't the time to show his power or his merit. What he did was, he joined the Avengers together. He decided to reach out to his tribe and fight the battle. And hence the battle was won. No Iron Man alone or no Captain America alone can win one battle. So sometimes you need to reach out to find your tribe. And that's what I did here. And sometimes reaching out is very simple like a click of your button. Which is quite familiar to all of you. So during Nepal, uh, earthquake, what I did was I just posted a story saying I'm willing to donate if any of you want to, please go ahead. And my inbox flooded, my inbox flooded with people who are eager to help. Why I'm again telling you this is because I I'm kept, you know, uh, people keep asking me how I inspire people, why do people come forward to help or what makes them come forward to help a community that is in need. So I, I don't think it's the lack of goodness in people because I believe that people are essentially good. It's a lack of awareness of that goodness that you can see in one person. We are all wired in a particular way. I believe there is connection in basic human form and that was very evident during the floods that happened in Kerala, which was one of the most devastating things that our state has ever faced. And during that time, it really helped me to be more systematic because of the trials that I faced in Nepal. All I did was to reach out to my tribe, find my tribe and plan it accordingly. So I don't have a big message for you or an inspiration for you, but I'm just trying to show you a few things that you haven't seen. Kerala flood itself showed us how, you know, different people that you've never seen, heard of, were willing to come forward. It showed us what wholeheartedness means. People came forward willingly to help. People came forward willingly to help people who they didn't know. They waited willingly, some were even taking their last breath, but that breath was, you know, they waited willingly for help. They waited willingly to give everything they had inside them to help another person. So, please keep these three things in your mind. Find your tribe. It's very easy to find your tribe. Any like-minded person like you can do whatever you want to do together. It will be easier. Then plan your things and fight your battle. Now I'll introduce you again to myself. I'm Tina Kunduri. I'm a teacher by the day. That's my bread and butter. I'm also an artist. 
uh, I can't purely call me an artist because I don't have a particular genre. I paint on everything and anything that is possible. Um, and by that, I literally mean anything and everything. I've even painted on frying pans to bald heads of people. So that's pretty much me. And I'm no social worker, but I love to be there when I can be, and I'd like to offer whatever I can. Thank you so very much.